Canada is facing a lot of protests across our country regarding the carbon tax. We've had enough protests over a carbon price hike halt traffic across Canada. Anger over the increase in the federal carbon price leads to protesters protests across Canada, including several that stalled traffic on the Trans-Canada Highway. Ottawa's planned $15 per ton increase in the federal consumer carbon price came into effect Monday, bringing the levy to $80 per ton. That translates into a liter of gasoline going up approximately 3.3 cents on average. A lot of people say we need to unify our country around an optimistic, optimistic vision, acting the tax. This is uh, conservative leader Pierre Polyev calling it an increase, calling the increase a cruel April Fool's Day joke on Canadians amidst the high cost of living. So this is interesting because it's actually really not interesting. Uh, the reality is, is that Canadians are feeling the pinch. Cost of living is through the roof. Now, I just want to say that it's not the carbon tax as it is. It's just a bunch of things coming together at the same time. So right now, inflation, interest rates are at historic highs. And the fact that this government is still going forward uh, with the carbon tax is pretty wild. Like it, it's, it boggles my mind that the feds didn't even say, hey, we're going to suspend this just for a little time until we get our stuff together, until inflation and interest rates start coming down for a sustained period of time, then we'll rethink the carbon tax, maybe a temporary pause of six to 12 months. The fact that that's not even factoring into their decision making lets me know that they're kind of hunkering down in their opinion. Now, you might be asking, well, why would any government want to put a price on pollution? The theory, to my knowledge, is that if there's a price on pollution, somehow you'll make better choices as a consumer. You know, you won't choose to bring your car to work. You won't choose to, uh, I don't know, go on as many flights. I don't know. It, the idea that you will make better choices in the event of uh, thinking about the environment instead. Now, I think proponents of the carbon tax think pricing pollution will make a difference. You know, they point to international studies where pricing pollution has made a difference. And there are various uh, OECD studies and uh, other jurisdictions where they've implemented some form of carbon tax or price on pollution, and some modest gains have been made. Uh, and so I think a lot of proponents are saying, well, that could happen here in Canada, uh, especially given that our country burns a ton of fossil fuels. I think per capita, we burn more fossil fuels or, or we're on the higher end because of oil and gas in our country and the fact that we're a lower population. So perhaps people think, proponents say, okay, well, if you put a price on pollution, Canada will actually be more impactful because if we lower our emissions here in Canada, we're actually doing a net benefit to the world because on a per capita basis, we stand to make a bigger impact. Again, just my surmising idea. Now, the flip side of this, I don't know if that actually ever leads to the outcomes that we want, if that makes sense. So the idea that you're going to tax us more and that fun those funds will be used for, you know, carbon emission reduction, environmentally friendly initiatives. I don't, and this is not a right or left thing. I just don't trust government to use funds in the most optimal way for that end. And then regardless of the optimal way. So like, even if they get $10 million from us by the end of the year, um, I don't think that them saying, well, we spent $10 million on wind farms. So there, there's the optimal allocation. I would then say, okay, well, pause. Are the wind farms generating electricity for enough Canadians that's a net benefit, right? So like, is it actually better for Canadians to get their energy from these wind farms than through traditional uh, fossil fuels, right? Like, is it actually a net benefit, right? Like I, I did a reel on my Instagram, shameless plug. If you're not following me on Instagram, definitely do. 
but I did a reel back a, a, a while back about a wind far a wind turbine here in downtown Toronto that doesn't generate the electricity it's supposed to and has been marred with technical problems over the years of its service life. And so it's not enough that they take 10 million and invest 10 million into a wind farm. We then have to assess whether that wind farm is a net benefit at reducing our emissions or is it costing us more to, you know, power 20 homes with it uh, versus, you know, burning fossil fuels to, to help, you know, 200 homes with the same amount of money. So there's still a lot of considerations at face value. We can't take things like wind and solar farms and say, well, they're a net benefit. We're not that stupid. I mean, I don't, we're not that ignorant of a people to say that that's must, that must be a good thing. So that's one of the criticisms I have with this kind of net, this net tax neutrality. I think the other thing that a lot of Canadians might be concerned about is the policies that the federal government puts forward uh, may not actually be grounded in things that actually work. Uh, so I think about what happened with uh, farmers. So this is interesting, and I'll share my screen here. There was an emissions redu reduction initiative by the federal government. And it was regarding the fact that Canada put forward a voluntary national fertilizer emissions reduction target of 30% between below 2020 levels by 2030. Now, this was announced just a few years ago, and it didn't give farmers enough time to actually realize this target as well. The feds did not consult meaningfully or across the board with enough farmers on this issue. And especially with groups like Fertilizer Canada and others, they felt like this was done not in consultation. And so I guess my my concern with things like the carbon tax is that it lends itself to governments putting forward policies that may not hit the mark, that may be arbitrary under the guise of climate change, under the guise of saving the environment. And the last thing I'll say on this, because uh, there's a lot and I've done a lot on it, so check out my website. I'll leave a link below on my climate change podcast series. I interviewed um, uh, a professor out in BC about uh, climate change and climate crisis. And this professor said, no matter what Canada does about climate change, it doesn't make our country more or less immune to the effects of global climate change. And so for those who are, you know, struggling with climate anxiety, et cetera, I mean, we can chat about that as well. But just remember that no tax that we put in will make Canada more or less immune. And for those that are saying that we must do something, remember, we, we're giving money to the government to then make the most optimal allocation of that tax revenue towards emissions reduction initiatives. But we're not clear what those emissions reduction initiatives are. And we need to make sure that those initiatives are actually reducing emissions, if in fact that is the goal. So those are some of the concerns with the carbon tax outside the fact that it's just driving up costs of living for Canadians coast to coast. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Eliminating the carbon, eliminating the carbon tax doesn't make your bottom line much better. Income tax still is the breadwinner. Um, and I'd love for the government to actually open the conversation about income tax reduction, like a national conversation, because Canada is one of the most highly taxed nations in the world. Um, but I'll leave that for another day. But those are just some initial thoughts about the carbon tax and why so many Canadians uh, are against it.